this is Gary Fox back again and we are going to uh, finish up the analysis of how much buoyancy we could get with a barrel, a plastic barrel. So this time we are going to uh, deal with it with it more than 50 percent immersed in the water. And let me click on the right stuff here. So we got a water line. This thing is uh, sinking pretty far. We've loaded it down quite a bit. So how much can we expect it to hold up? Okay, this is very similar to the last problem. This time I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it a little bit different than I did last time. I'm going to talk from the overview first, then we'll talk about the math. Okay, the first thing we'll do is that we'll draw a uh, line from the center of this thing, of the cross-section area of our barrel. We we'll draw a line from the center to where the water line is. We we'll do that in both directions. So those lines are, are equal to the radius of the uh, of the barrel. Okay. Then what we're going to do, <clears throat> we're going to take that and we're going to take and make a take a pie slice out of our barrel. Imagine we're going to imagine as if we're taking a pie slice, and from that we can calculate. We subtract that. That will give us the percentage of the barrel that's that's under water. All of the stuff that's drawn in black. And then what we will do, we'll re-add this triangle back in here. We'll add that back from the pie slice to calculate the complete area that's under water. So, to reiterate, we take the whole area of the barrel like I said, we're looking at a cross-section area. And then we take this pie slice out by forming these two angles. And then take it, after we take the pie slice out, we re reinsert this triangle right here, which we can easily calculate. And that will give us the area that is immersed. Now you hear me talking about area. We then take that and multiply it by the length of the barrel. And that will give us the volume that's been displaced. So we know the volume of the water that's displaced. We can calculate the weight of the water, which will give us how much lift it's creating. The only other thing that we need to subtract is the weight of the barrel from that. And that will give us the actual lift because the barrel's weight we're stuck with no matter what. So we have to, uh, we have to account for that weight. <coughs> Okay, let's do it a little bit more mathematically now. We'll turn off those two because uh, we'll be overwriting on that area. Okay, once we draw those first two lines, we can then go from the center line to one of those, and we have a right triangle, uh, the vertical center line, and we can know from that we can calculate we have this height from the center line to the water line is our immersion depth above the center line. So we have a, a uh, we have a <clears throat> distance right there which would be our adjacent side. We have the radius which is our hypotenuse so we're able to use the arc cosine to calculate this angle A. Okay, the, let, the right hand side triangle of these two right triangles is exactly the same as the left hand side. So basically the full angle right there that's within that triangle that we're going to have to do for our pie slice is going to be 2A. We take the ratio of 2A compared to 360 and we know what the area is of the complete circle so 2A that pie slice that ratio of 2A versus uh, 2 times A versus the uh, 360 degrees will give us the uh, ratio of how much we're going to be taking out with our pie slice, spelled P-I-E. Okay, once we have that, then we have to figure out this triangle, what its area is, because we have to add that back in. Well, a triangle, we can figure it out. <clears throat> we know this angle A, so L is equal to R, the radius, 
which is uh, the hypotenuse times the sine of A. And then we take 2L, and that will give us the triangle, the base of the triangle. The area of a triangle is 1 half times the base times the height. And we know what the immersion depth is above the center line, so that's the height of the triangle. So we multiply those together, divide by 2, and that gives us the triangle area. And we're then able to, uh, we're then able to calculate the, uh, the area that is immersed. Once we know the area that's immersed, we multiply it times the length of the barrel. And that will give us the uh, volume that's immersed. So we know the volume. We multiply that by the uh, weight of water per cubic inch because we're doing everything in inches. And that will give us the weight of the water. And then uh, once we have the weight of the water, we know that, that, that the displaced amount of water is equal to the lift that the water produces once, it's, uh, once something's immersed in it. So we're able to calculate the amount of lift that this barrel will create. Okay, we're going to do that with a spreadsheet right now. So let me shrink this window and pull up the spreadsheet. I already have it open. Okay. And we'll go over here and we'll go through these calculations. <clears throat> okay. Since I had done the immersion depth starting from the bottom of the barrel to, to about halfway up, I now know that uh, I want to continue on in those one inch increments. So I take, I just continued on to create the total immersed depth until I got up to 23 and the maximum depth is when it's uh, immersed at 23.25 because that's what the radius or the diameter of the, uh, air, of the uh, barrel is. Okay, I then subtract that total immersion depth from the center line and the center line is 11.625 so I subtract 12 from 6.2 11.625 from 12 and that gives me 0.375 and uh, then I can now calculate my radius my my uh, I now have my <coughs> I now have my radius and I now have my adjacent angle, so I'm able to calculate that angle A, adjacent side. And once I do, I, I can transform that into degrees because radians doesn't tell me a lot usually. And once I've done that, then I can know what my pie slice portion is of the total area. Right now, that direction is about 90 degrees so that pie slice is a really big slice it's taken almost half of the uh, barrel and so now I can calculate the area of that by multiplying that percentage times the total area of the barrel the cross section of the barrel multiply it by the length of the barrel and that gives me the cubic inches <clears throat> now I'm sorry, I multiply it by the, I didn't calculate the length of that line L. I'm sorry, I'm calculating the triangle right now. And once I do that, that length L, and you'll notice that that length L is our, as we start immersing, immersing, immersing the barrel more, the length L becomes smaller and smaller because that pie slice is a much smaller slice as we start sinking this barrel. Our total immersed area, did I can calculate the immersed triangle area. I can then calculate that area of the triangle because I multiply base times height and divide by 2. And then uh, I have the total immersed area, which is the total area minus the pie, the pie slice plus the triangles area. That gives me the total area. Then to calculate the volume, I multiply that times the length of the barrel. And then I multiply that by the weight per cubic inch of water. And then that will give me 
the uh, weight of the displaced water. So I have that. I then multiply that. I'm sorry. I then subtract the weight of the barrel, which was 22 pounds. And that will give me how much lift this barrel is going to produce for me. Because I figured if we build a platform, we're going to have to have at least four barrels. So it comes out, I just multiplied that number times four to get the four barrel lift. Uh, because I was curious, I took this change in lift. lift and uh, as we start sinking that barrel, barrel more and more, we're getting less lift per inch of immersion because the barrel is getting smaller. The diameter of it, not the diameter, but this pie slice is getting to be smaller and smaller in width. And so the triangle is getting smaller and smaller in width. And so it doesn't gain as much uh, lift per inch of immersion. So as we get down there where we're one inch from uh, sinking the barrel, that last inch is not going to give us much more lift. It's only going to give us 39 pounds lift for an extra, uh, for four barrels. So uh, we start sinking this thing quite a bit. We, get, we got something to start worrying about if we start seeing it going down. So we don't want to load the barrels that much, in other words. And to kind of talk in general right now, if you think about this, let's go back to the CAD program. Uh, and let's just use the, well, we just use, we just turn off the d dimensions right now. Once that water line, if, if, if the water line was down here on the bottom half of it, if you think about the barrel, it would be floating real close to the top of the water. If we're in a shallow area, that would be nice. And if the barrel was, uh, if we were trying to move this raft forward, we wouldn't be having much drag, but there wouldn't be a lot of stuff trying to uh, fight the water as it moved forward. Once we have this thing sunk quite a bit, we wouldn't really be wanting to use it as much because, it, number one, we would be hitting things on the bottom if we're in a shallow area. And number two is that it would be... Uh, having a lot of drag as we tried to move this thing forward. So we really want to stay in this first half down here, the barely having this thing sinking. And the barrels are cheap, uh, something really nice in comparison to uh, using PVC pipe. So anyhow, that's pretty much all of it. Again, I will have a link to my webpage. My webpage will then have a place where you can download both this CAD file and you can download the uh, Download the Excel spreadsheet, and uh, you will be able to look over the math in detail that way. I've kind of explained it here. So once you look at the math, let's shrink this again. Once you look at one of these cells, you can see the math up here at the top. Uh, as, you, as you go through it, you can see where I got the magic numbers from. And you have to scroll up to see the ones. Remember the dollar sign? Uh, if you have a dollar sign in front of the letter, that tells you that as I move down, as I move across, the uh, the letter, the, the, it will stay in the same relationship in the horizontal direction, the cells will. If it's in, the, in front of the number, that means as I move downward, as I copy a cell and move downward, the relationship will be the same, will always be pointing to that same cell in the uh, horizontal direction. If there's a dollar sign in front of both, then that means it's always going to be pointing at the same cell no matter where I copy it. So as you go through these, you'll be able to figure out where I came up with the math that I did. And uh, it's a good way to learn spreadsheets a little bit. And uh, my spreadsheets are not usually all that pretty, uh, but Usually the math is right because I check it out as I do it. Anyhow, that should uh, be some useful and interesting stuff for y'all. If anybody builds a uh, raft, uh, these barrels are a really good way to go. So uh, good, they're cheap, and as you can see, there's a guy using them commercially. 
So, it's a good way to go. Appreciate you listening. Uh, this is Gary Fox of Create and Make.